Yo, what is up guys, Cyfox here today, and I have a nice commentary video as Mizuver Kitty Glee vs. Holy Pally God Comp on Tolvaron Arena. And in this video, you're about to learn how to fight caster comps in general, what to think about positionally, how to mix offense and defense in order to win. You usually have to take it into deep dabbling to beat caster comps because they can play in a very defensive way and just play off position. So that means you have to play pretty well offensively and defensively. So positionally, you definitely do not want to chase or over chase. And how we deal with that is we want to hit the closest caster to our healer. If you chase a caster, for example, if this priest goes really far and the mage is in between you and your healer, the mage can easily CC your healer because he's really close to your healer. And then what this hap when this happens is the pally or the priest can stun you, you're too far, positioning is really bad, and you just take a lot of damage. So we have to hit the co closest caster. Our main kill target will be the priest, and we will eventually be killing the priest, but we have to play in a way to not just throw the game. So in the opener, we get a nice double fear. Uh, this allows me to stun the priest because he can't feed in the fear. We get a nice roll on the DB, so we avoid a lot of CC. We get our CC. We get an in-cap. My warrior reflects sheep. Everything is cross CC'd, storm bolt into a half clone. We get trinket, BM, desperate prayer. This team is scared and they have to run away because they have no setup. They have no DB. They still have Hodge, so in about four seconds, what this mage wants to do is he wants to blink DB my healer into a Hodge on my warrior so they can kill my warrior. But we go to the mage here to delay the go. Pop some of my cooldowns right here in this bash. Make them scared a little bit. They have to grip the mage. He goes to the middle pillar and here me and my warrior pushing up to the priest. What this does is this is this is an example of this positioning right here. So we chase the priest. He's the closest target or he's the furthest target rather. The mage is in between us and my monk. This mage blinks, DBs, my warrior will get hodged and he's in trouble. So when I notice this, I stun the priest to peel because he has no trinket. And he's the only thing I can stun. Cast a couple of heals onto my healer, onto my warrior, sorry. And we get a nice reflect on the silence. So this goes pretty much over. We play defense really well. Give my warrior a couple of heals. As a feral, it is important to heal your teammates, especially if you are playing the strength of the wild honor talent. It is a very, very good honor talent to give off heals to your allies because your regrowth will always crit and do a lot of healing. So you have to utilize that tool really well. It can make or break games for you depending on how you use it. I get kicked on a regrowth, so I just flesh craft because there's nothing else to do. Push up to the mage, kick fire because he wants to build up combust with fireballs. I notice that the mage isn't playing medallion for trinket breaks. So this mage is playing really offensive and he wants to play really offensive because he wants to kill us really fast. So we go on the mage here because he's the closest target to our healer. We don't want to have that split positioning again. And as they fall back, we just hit the mage on the way. We got a storm bolt on the pally, almost get the cauterize. I try for a clone there and eventually I do get the clone. We get trinket from the pally, we get a fear on the priest for cross CC. I stun the priest. My warrior gets hodge, but luckily my monk does a good job dispelling my warrior off the hodge. I kick the poly, so my monk doesn't get shaped out the VT dispel. Here they have to fall back because they don't have a setup and they have to kind of just reset and not take as much damage as possible. And this is another example of that split positioning, right? The mage is in between us and my healer. So the mage is allowed to DB sheep my healer. I thought they were going to go me here. So this is kind of a little positional mistake because I was so far. So I decided to run back to this wall but instead, they want to kill my warrior, right? And I was kind of late on the peels. So my warrior gets in a really, really scary range of HP. And he almost dies, but luckily he leaps back to the pillar and he's perfectly fine. So positionally, that was a mistake. But it could have been a good play if they wanted to go me. But it was a misplay during the time. We hit the mage here because, again, he's really close to us and we don't want him to harass our monk. With CC. 
Stop the pally from drinking. They have to fall back again because they have no damage or CC. So in this downtime when they're falling back, this is a good moment for you to just put up a lot of pressure, tax the healer's mana, and kind of just get ready for the next setup. The mage is pushed in, so I stun him behind the pillar. We get a nice full bash, but he gets gripped because they don't want him to take a lot of damage. And we just push up on, on, on them and we just try to do as much damage as possible to the priest because he is the closest target and he's the least mobile and they have no setups and we can just tax the healer's mana in this way. I get feared on the setup when they combust on my warrior. My monk has a trinket cocoon. My warrior actually almost dies in this go because they do a lot of damage so I have to build up combo points and heal them with regrowth and I managed to do so. Topped them off in a couple of regrowths. We, they get rallied too so they got quite a bit of cooldowns from us. The mage shifting powers for CDR on his cooldowns so they have a go relatively soon again. And we go mage because again he's the closest target. Get a nice kick on the fireball to stop him from getting that combustion. Got a nice reflect on the sheep. And got an incap on the pally. Here the positioning also gets wonky. The mage is pulling me back to this pillar and my monk and my warrior are all over there. So what I do here is I decide to not sit the mage and actually go to the priest over there. Because if I sit the mage, what's going to happen is the pally and the shadow priest are probably going to silence or stun my monk and I'm going to get DB'd. And I'm just going to cross these it again into the setup which is really bad because I can't heal my teammate. So I go in the priest so I don't get cross ECed and I'm with my team. We have to pull out this pillar because again, they're just taking a lot of damage and they have to put us into a bad spot. If we're on the pillar, it's really hard for them to CC. So the mage blink DBs, but my warrior does a really nice job charge kicking in the poly so my monk doesn't get CC'd. He also war banners the silence and I believe the poly and my warrior just pretty much played MVP this entire setup because he stopped at pretty much every CC on my monk. I sit the mage here just to prevent him from casting even more CC and doing damage and I get some stuns, we get a ROP. And again yeah they're just pulling back, it's just pretty much just they do their go, we deflect it, they have to run, get their cooldowns back do their go and if we can deflect that one we just keep doing it a bunch of times rinse and repeat they eventually will just kind of get overwhelmed with our pressure so we just have to play pretty well defensively while keeping up the most damage we get a nice in-cap sweep on the pally i get kicked from the mage and i full stun the mage because he's pretty much the only target we can hit right now I try to clone the mage i get db'd almost got shoots because of that db I do get the clone because there's no kick or DB on that bop, so the mage can't play fetsa with that bop. We get a good leap fear on the pally, and here I'm just kind of just chilling. I know that they have a go, we don't have that much damage, so I'm just kind of just feeling them out, seeing what they're going to do, and kind of just see if I can get myself in a good position to where I don't get cross CC'd and I'm able to heal my warrior. I believe my, my monk he, he might have rolled or ported that Dragon's Breath from the Mage. So they don't actually get a CC because my monk did a really good job avoiding that. So let's see. So the Mage is right there and he blinks eventually. So he blinks. I think my monk kind of just has Yeah, so my monk ports it pretty much. And that's huge because again, they don't have a setup with that. And this allows us to play offensive. We notice that we get a full Storm Bolt. We got our damage going, pop all my cooldowns, pop Thrill Frenzy, Tiger's Fury. I leap to the pally. And the reason why I leap to the pally at this moment, even though they have a sheep and he's in Disperse, is because I know this priest wants to cancel this Disperse and fear me. Because that's how they usually do it, right? Teams that know that Feral's heal a lot, they will always try to cross you the Feral so they can't, or the Feral can't heal your uh, their target. So I leap to the pally instantly, I DB him or encounter him, I go around the pillar, I root him, and here I make the choice of sitting right here or standing right here and casting regrowths 
from far, far away. Because if I push up any further, I will get CS or I will get hot from the pally. So I'm in a really perfect spot to just sit here and just heal my teammate. Because I can't get CS, I can't get Hodge because the pallet's rooted and the mage is pretty far away. I stun the priest right there, I fake CS on the clone. I get sheeped off of that because I'm just feared. And my warrior's alone, so this is what I mean. They got some good cross CC, kind of scary. We get triggered from the pallet. I try to clone, but the pallet ranges my clone and... The priest door is away and we have to hit the mage because he's the closest target to us. We don't want to split the positioning again. The game is pretty much kind of going towards our favor because the mana is about to get taxed and our damage is about to just ramp up really, really heavily. As long as we don't fail defensively, we're just going to win off of just raw damage. So I make the choice or we make the choice of going priest here because the mage is on the middle or at the middle of the map. And again, if we chase the mage, he's just going to drag us really, really far. The priest is probably going to stun or silence my monk. And it's really bad to just chase the mage over there because the priest can actually CC my monk and they can set up off of that. So we go to the priest. We get a nice double fear right there and I war stomp the priest so he can't use anything. Kick the shadow man, we force bubble from the paladin. I flush shot because... I anticipate them going me or I'm just gonna get CC'd so I try to just flush craft some things up. I noticed that okay, so I noticed that they're actually gonna go me because the priest is targeting me and there's a DB on my monk, so I instantly run behind this pillar and get stunned from the priest. He gets a really huge mind games off me, but here I don't panic because I know that the mage isn't on me, and if I don't die to the mind games with my region up, I'm perfectly fine. So all I have to do here is I just have to line the priest, and that's what I do. I just line the priest, command the pillar, battle master, and just regen back up, and I'm perfectly fine. Their setup is over, and this means that we can just play hyper aggressive on them. I have all my cooldowns back up, and we get fade for free. I roar the cast on his aura mastery to a full bash. We get a dispersion, and yeah. So this is pretty much. The time for us to just run at them. They have no cooldowns. The Paladin is almost oom. Um. Keep up the damage. I have every cooldown. Don't throw defensively. And we're just going to win the game pretty much. I fake CS on the Cyclone. And here the Mage blinks away. So well done by him to put the CC. I get full stun. I bar skin because I thought they were just going to hit me really hard. But they end up not. So since they're playing defensive. We can just run at them at this point. Dampening is pretty high. And we kind of just have this game on lock. My monk doesn't get cheap, so I kind of play defensive a little bit. Just regen, go behind the pillar so I don't die randomly. And I'm fine. They have no DRs again. So the Pally needs a drink because he's oom. And if he gets a drink, it's huge. But if we just do a lot of damage to the priest, he can't always sit down and just drink. So we just put in a lot of pressure. Pop all my cooldowns with Tigris for Adaptive Swarm. Got a full Storm Bolt on the Priest. We get feared, I shrink it to Roar and stun the Pally because the Priest has no cooldowns, they have no cooldowns, they have no outs. And we just kind of went off of that sheer damage that I was talking about. So, I think this is a really good example of how to fight caster comps on Tolveron, especially, but caster comps in general. I believe this can work on pretty much any type of map. I think Tolveron is actually one of the worst maps to fight caster comps on because it's just so big right they can just drag you behind pillars and just like across the map and it can be really awkward for your healer and yourself because like who do i chase when do i chase and pretty much you just chase when you have a lot of damage and they have no cc and if you want to play defensive positioning wise just hit the closest wizard just hit whatever you can you can't play completely defensive because you're not going to get anything done playing completely defensive if the healer's mana isn't going down and he isn't scared of them losing on mana, you're not playing offensive enough. And if your healer's getting CC'd really easy, easily and you're just pretty much dying a lot, it's probably you're because you're playing really offensive. So you need to find that really good balance of offense and defense. Defensively, you need to trade really well. If you overlap one time or t 
two times, you can pretty much just throw the game right there because all it takes is just one really good setup and if you react in a wrong way, you just lose. So you gotta play the good defensively. Offensively, you need to be putting out as much damage as you can. So a really good time to be offensive is when the enemy team does not have CC for your healer. So this is pretty much fresh right after a CC chain from the caster comp. There's no CC, just run at the team, just try to do as much damage as possible. And while doing so, we kind of think about what they're gonna do for their next setup and how you can deflect it. How you can get yourself in a position to support your team as a feral. Go to like spread away, don't get cross CC'd and go into a position where you can heal your allies. And that's how you kind of want to think about going against caster comps. It's pretty back and forth. It's just being defensive, offensive, defensive, offensive, and do it well enough, do it clean, and you should be able to win against caster comps. It can be hard, but it is 100% possible. So I hope this helps on beating caster comps, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.